Shalom Chabrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. It is December the 25th. It's the evening in, uh, we're actually over in Europe right now, Austria. In fact, the country of Austria. My wife's aunt uh, suffered a stroke here about a week or so ago there, so we have come to try to see her. She's 80 years old. And uh, so I'm actually reporting from there, and so you keep getting a different scene, a little bit, a little bit of every time. But uh, we have very serious breaking news that uh, that I needed to share with you today. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to include in here a little bit of a uh, a view of Charisma uh, News. Uh, I don't know if it's Charisma Magazine that puts this out or not, but Sister Christina shared uh, share, shares a lot of news with us there. Some of her news we also uh, put up that she sends to us, but uh, she was kind enough to send this to me. This is probably one of the most provocative, most serious news uh, pieces I've seen in a long time, next to World War even. And that is they're reporting that seven Christians... Uh, jailed for refusing to convert to Catholicism. You have heard that right. I mean, if I have ever heard of an Antichrist move once again, uh, we are definitely seeing this here. Uh, there has been over 8,000 shares of this already there. This is on our Facebook page, Israeli News Live, uh, so you can catch this article there. I will try to make sure in the news broadcast I put a link to this. Uh, there will be many of you that also listening on Lamb uh, News Radio as well. So if you want to try to follow this link here, I don't actually have the web address for this right here. It is Charisma News, uh, and it was here put out. Uh, let's see, the date of the story was 12-17-2015. The, 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 the article was written by Olivia Miller. International Christian Concern is what it's under, so that might help you guys find this, or you can go to Israeli News Live on Facebook. Uh, that is our Facebook page there that might help you to find this as well. Let me just give you a little insight on the article here, what it says here. Um, this says uh, here that International Christian Concerns Concern has learned that seven evangelical Christians in uh, Chipas, Mexico, were incarcerated on December the 15th after refusing to convert to Catholicism. State and federal authorities have been informed of threats to illegal to, to illegally expel or incarcerate members of the evangelical community weeks in advance but have refused to intervene. The imprisonment comes as the culmination of a uh, unit, uh, excuse me, ultimatum that was given by local officials of Leva uh, Velasveca Vex, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not good at Spanish, guys, a municipality of Las Margar Margaritas. Uh, Chipas, the local evangelical community, to convert to Catholicism, leave the village, or face prison. This is what they're talking about. And seven have been arrested, too, by the way. Eight converted. Imagine that. According to, to Louis uh, Harara, director of the Coordination of uh, Christian Council of Churches, eight families in the village have succumbed to the ultimatum and signed documents indicating their conversion to Catholicism. Mexico's constitution explicitly protects the right of all citizens to profess and practice the religious belief of their choice. The seven who are currently jailed have refused to convert. God bless them. Be praying for them, please, friends, that uh, they do stay strong there. That is one thing. That is nothing but an antichrist spirit, to say the very least. We're looking back. Uh, we're, we're talking about going back into the time of inquisition of the of the Roman Catholic Church to actually do this and to imagine that this particular uh, Catholic community in Mexico is doing this and uh, you just can't help but wonder, is Pope Francis in agreement with this? I'm sure publicly not, but privately, who knows what he what he may think. I'm sure he'd like to see the entire world Catholic. I know we've had quite a few articles recently that have been shared with us where the Pope Francis has actually said no longer to try to evangelize the Jews. And some people say, well, that just seems crazy. Well, I happen to agree with the Pope on that right there because uh, if the Catholic Church is evangelizing Jews, believe me, they're not becoming Christians, they're becoming Catholics. So I agree with him. He shouldn't be evangelizing them. And in many cases, sometimes I have to wonder about other organizations as well doing this. If, if, my, if my Jewish brethren, you have to remember, God has promised that, that, they will, that he will deal with Israel. He deals with them himself. He sends the two witnesses that will actually bring them in. 
Now, if God opens a door for you to witness to a Jewish person about the love of Yeshua, then by all means, take that opportunity. We never know when someone may come in. I was one example. I actually came in. A little boy from a Jewish family that actually believed that Yeshua was Messiah because I heard a Baptist minister preach about him. Even though I was only eight years old, I felt very compelled myself. So you never know when someone might come in and believe. And of course, I was being Jewish, we still did not go to any churches. In fact, my mother didn't go back to one for a long time until actually, I actually led her to the Lord myself when I was about 35 years of age. Maybe a little younger. I forget exactly how old I was at the time because my mother did pass away at the age of 49. So maybe I was around 25 or so. I forget now. In an interview with the ICC, back to the article here, uh, George Lee uh, uh, Galindo, director of the Impulse 18 uh, Human Rights Organization in Mexico, said that for months uh, the Christian community has been pressured to recant their faith or face expulsion from uh, Leva uh, Vela, Vela, Vela Zeque. Let me spell the name of that city there. It's L E Y V A. The second part, second part of the name is V E L A Z Q U E S. At a time, writing ICC sources indicated that our evangelical Christians in the community are continually being summoned before local officials in an effort to force them to renounce their faith. This incident reflects a growing trend of religious persecution in rural areas of Mexico, as well as a reluctance by the state and federal government to protect religious minorities. In June, ICC estimated that more than 70 open cases of religious persecution against minority Christian communities, each involving between 20 to 100 victims, existed in the states of Chipas and uh, Hidalgo. Um, and uh, they mentioned several different city names there. On July 15, Senator Marco Rubio questioned Assistant Secretary of State of Roberto uh, Jacobson, the current nominee of U.S. Ambassador to Mexico, on how she would address this issue. Uh, the Isaac Six ICC Advocate Director said, It is simply unconscionable for the state and federal governments of Mexico to repeatedly ignore the arbitrary arrest and expulsion of their own citizens by local governments on the basis of religious beliefs. We know that the federal government, as well as the state of uh, Chiapas, was warned days in advance that the evangelical community in, in Leva, Velaquez, was under threat, yet even after seven individuals were thrown in prison for the religious beliefs, action was not taken. The blatant uh, uh, abdication for the responsibility has for a decade now sent the message to rural villages across Mexico that if you have a problem with someone from another faith, you can simply force them to convert or leave. Today, hundreds of men and women and children are homeless in Mexico because they choose to follow their beliefs because their government refused to act. We call on the federal government of Mexico to immediately intervene and halt the unlawful detention of members of the evangelical community in Leva Belaquez. This, this, friends, is, I want to say it's shocking, but you know, I'm not surprised, in fact. You know, there's many places in the world, not just Mexico, but even in Eastern Europe, many communities are predominantly Catholic. You go into the villages and neighborhoods all over Eastern Europe, you will find statues and crosses at the beginning of every neighborhood and at the exiting of every neighborhood. It is predominantly a Catholic uh, area there, and and to to try to 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 um, to evangelize that puts yourself at a high risk. Nonetheless, it's just like in Israel. If you think about it, Israel, you you can be a believer of Yeshua in Israel, but one thing's for sure: you go to evangelizing on the street, you are risking to be uh, arrested. Not to mention. Uh, or to be thrown out of the country completely. And uh, I know many Christians do, you, and it's done successfully in some cases there, but you just have to remember, it depends on where you are at. And Israel is not against people uh, practicing their own faith. They are very much uh, open to other religions being in the country. That's very evident by all the, the uh, different Catholic churches all over the country there with all of their pagan uh, ways, certainly in the country. But uh, even in uh, evangelical groups, things of that nature can practice in Israel, but they do not want you to proselyte the Jewish people. And uh, so, so at any rate there, 
very, very serious uh, news there. I wanted to bring that to your attention right off the bat. Got some more interesting things here, some things here that, that are very concerning to me uh, as well, and especially with the United States and their actions that they're doing. The United States has issued an, uh, an international arrest warrant for a Russian citizen in Israel. Uh, his name is uh, Berkova, uh, Alex, Alexei Berkova, and he was arrested on December the 15th at Ben Gurion Airport at the request of the United States. Russia is up in arms about this. I did not know for 10 days about this man's arrest. Um, I'll be sharing you a photo of him. It's very difficult to find that, but I did find a photo of him on freenews.xyz. Uh, and uh, But the uh, Russian government is up in arms and infuriated because this is not just the first time that the United States going through other countries uh, gets arrest warrants answered by these third-party nations, you know, as a third-party arrest there. And uh, in Russia is demanding answers immediately and is demanding that Israel does not extradite uh, their Russian citizen back to the United States. Give you a little bit of insight on the article here. The foreign ministry demands that Israel provide all the information about the arrest of Russian Berkov um, and allow him to consult uh, of the Russian Federation. This was stated by the commissioner of Russian Foreign Ministry on Issues of Human Rights, Democracy, and Rule of Law, Konstantin Dol Dolgov. Uh, is the one that actually stated this. He is the Russian official uh, that is speaking about this. Uh, this man was jailed in the U.S. Konstantin uh, asked the doctors of the Red Cross for help. According to the Embassy of Russia in Tel Aviv on December the 13th, international airport named Ben Gurion Airport by Israeli police detained the uh, citizen of Russia, A.Y. Berkov, informed debts. Uh, on December 24th, the Israeli side of the respective inquiries was informed that the arrest was made in accordance with the order competent authorities of the U.S., uh, he added. Now, that's, we're looking at two different time frames on there. The 25th, I believe, is what this was uh, as far as in Eastern time, but 24th on U.S. time. We strongly condemn this, uh, this another case of extra, uh, extraterritorial application of U.S. law against the citizens of Russian Federation, said the diplomat. This totally unacceptable practice has already taken a chronic character. The American authorities stubbornly continue to violate the relevant rules of international law, infringe upon the legitimate uh, rights and interests of Russian citizens, ignore the bilateral legal basis of the, of the field of law enforcement. Again, we represent and warrant that it is a dead end, even more complicating the already stricken, not our fault, um, already stricken, uh, what he's speaking about is the stricken relationship between the United States and America, and he, and he goes on to say that this Dolgov actually says this is not our, our fault. Um, we demand, he says, the immediate provisions of all information about the grounds of arrest of the citizen of, uh, of the Russian Federation, an organization on urgent uh, consular access to him. Now, that has been granted. They did get to go in there. Uh, they did warn also the Israelis that he is not to be uh, handed over and that he is to be afforded all the health care, etc. Uh, I can only imagine one of the reasons why for 10 days the Russian Federation was never made known about this is because of the interrogation process that the U.S. was doing upon this man. Uh, we've seen ourselves one day. I was actually doing a, a broadcast in a park and. I had actually no idea that across the street from me was uh, the diplomatic uh, headquarters for the United States because I actually lived right up the street, um, or I'd actually rented a place, I should say a little apartment there for, for a couple of weeks when we were first coming in looking for a place to rent long term. And uh, while we were filming, and I'm talking about, oh gosh, maybe 300 meters away, so I was like nowhere near uh, the American compound for the consulate's office there. But the next thing I know, I have Israeli security forces all surrounding me, wanting to know what am I doing, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, I was just totally amazed. And finally, I asked them, why are you asking me all this? They said, well, you have the American consulate compound here in the background. And I said, well, I'm nowhere near the American consulate compound there. I'm only doing, I was actually doing a biblical teaching at the time. It was, uh, Shabbat was just starting. And the one security officer says, what are you doing coming on Shabbat? I said, well, you know, when a, when a, when a rabbi speaks, 
uh, which I'm not a rabbi, I said, but I just use that because I knew it makes sense for him. I said, but when a rabbi is speaking to his people, that's something that he does on Shabbat. I said, I think that's a normal practice, to say the least. Uh, anyway, that went over like a lead balloon for this guy here. Nonetheless, though, uh, like I said, the, the U.S., uh, there's a lot of things that the U.S. does, guys, that you guys just are not aware of. And I, I am very sorry for that, uh, to say the very least. Um, anyway, let's move on to other news here. Uh, the next part of the news here that I want to talk to you guys about, very, very concerning here. Uh, and I'm going to play a little bit of this video here while we're on, on, on air here, mainly for those that pick up the broadcast via MP3. This is from RT News. Um, and RT News is, uh, well, maybe I can't do that because I don't think with uh, Lamb Radio that we could actually play that for you. But let me just express to you what RT is speaking about here. Uh, some of the, 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 what we're finding out that the, um, the, the, in, the, the Turkish regime uh, has direct links with ISIS and now there is more proof there. The evidence reveals that, that, that they are now directing um, uh, the ISIS members in the country because after some of the battles there that were going on, uh, they're in, 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 in the country of Syria and Iraq. In this case here, it was Iraq. They were able to, uh, they, from two of the men that were killed, some of the leaders there of the ISIS fighters there, they had confiscated cell phones from them. And on the cell phones they actually were able to, to see that the ISIS leaders were in direct contact with Turkey's secret service agents there, uh, communicating their whereabouts and what was going on. Let me share with you some of the, the, uh, the report here from RT News. It says, terrorists are freely crossing the Turkish border back and forth with Ankara providing militants with logistical support. Military spokesman for the Iraqi militia told RT citing crystal clear evidence gathered from prisoners and on the battlefield. According to uh, Karim Al-Nouri, spokesman for the Popular Front's uh, Baad organization, uh, one of Iraq's most popular Shiite uh, militias, their forces were able to secure enough data from the dead ISIS terrorist bodies to directly implicate Turkey in the involvement with Islamic State. Uh, that's ISIS uh, and ISIL is different names that they go by. While the terrorists meticulously destroyed any possible evidence in possession of their fighters by burning their corpses along with any electronic devices carried by them, Shiite militia was able to secure some hard data. And this is what he actually quotes here. Let me read this to you. Recently we found a few of their phones which have messages on their orders coordinates and data movement of their people, Nori told RT. The problem, and, and by the way, when I say Nori told RT, this, and, and I've actually watched the interview itself, um, and uh, and you can see that, those of you that are watching the screen now on, on our YouTube broadcast there, Nori actually uh, did the interview with RT News, and they talked to him directly about this. He said the problem, going on to what he says here, the problem ISIL did not just appear out of the blue. Somebody is allowing them to freely cross borders. I want the audience to know the extent to which Turkey openly supports ISIS, he says. Among the evidence which Nori claims is now in possession of the Iraqi intelligence are photos showing Turkish President Erdogan's son doing business with ISIS representatives. We have photo material and comments on Erdog, Erdogan's son's material where he meets with ISIS heads. Nori said, there is nothing fabricated in this case. There is no Photoshop. These shots are real. They were made public by ISIS commanders themselves, he's, he claims. Nori hopes that Iraqi special forces will eventually come across audio recordings directly implicating the Turkish leadership and shady ISIS deals. The data collected is also being analyzed by Iraq's intelligence to the degree particip participation of the Turkish ser secret services and involvement in ISIS affairs. Now, even the, the thing is, is even unfortunately, the United States is very much involved in this as well. As we saw in one of RT's footages that they were showing, uh, whether or not RT did the footage themselves or if they had obtained the footage there, we saw U.S. Uh, special forces working with the Turkish military there. Now, we already know that Barack Obama sent in Navy SEALs 
uh, 50 of them, according to his own uh, statement there, into northern Syria and would not say where they were going there. That was kind of interesting. And also, the United States with Turkey has made a, about a 65-mile wide swath uh, safe zone for the ISIS militants. Now, of course, they're not saying it's for ISIS. They're saying it's for uh, those rebel forces uh, fighting against uh, uh, Bashar al-Assad in his, uh, his uh, country there. But the thing is, is we, the, the more and more that we're finding the implications directly with Syria, I'm, I'm sorry, with, uh, with Turkey dealing uh, uh, and working with ISIS, to attack Syria and to overthrow Bashar al-Assad, the more it also is implicating the United States as well, especially in the fact of the illegally smuggling of oil. Again, Russia, uh, with their drones, has spotted another huge convoy of oil tankers going freely across the Turkish border. Uh, they had estimated 12,000 tankers. That, and, and you see it in the video footage there. It is unbelievable the convoy of trucks crossing the border. They zoom in with the uh, drone footage there right on the Turkish flag there at the border so you can tell exactly what's going on. And it is just going on more and more and more and more. We see that Erdo Erdogan will not apologize for the downing of the Su-24 uh, bomber of Russia uh, that was shot down here just about a month ago now. And it is, it's only escalating, friends. And, and our concern is, especially even like with Pope Francis making his own statement recently, uh, that the, this may be the last Christmas that you will see. And I think he's talking about more so of normalcy the way it is now. Um, because the fact is, he says, he's already stated that World War III has already begun. But Pope Francis really foresees that it's going to get worse. And I like to quote him there because why? He's the guy that kind of calls the shots to begin with. You don't think that he's not the one pulling the strings on the United States to let Turkey know what they should do and when they should do it. And the funny thing is, is they're saying that the United States has told Turkey to pull their forces out of Iraq uh, because Iraq is all upset over them being there. But it doesn't seem to be dying down whatsoever. It's only getting worse and worse over there. So if Turkey's pulling back any of their forces, they must have only took 10 soldiers out of there because the, the, the tanks are still rolling in the neighborhoods there. Uh, they're, they're sending in a lot of people, are, especially nowadays with the cell phones and everything, they're sending in the cell phone footage of, of the Turkish tanks in the neighborhoods there, uh, just shooting up places, killing people left and right. And of course, that's backed by the U.S. And that's a shame for me because that's our own people there uh, to see them. Uh, fighting there in northern Iraq. And the thing is, it's the Kurds. Uh, many of these people are the Kurds there. And this is, the, this is where the people of the United States was there protecting at one time back during Saddam Hussein's regime. So it's just turning into a mess, friends, to say the very least. Very sad to say. And uh, anyway, uh, happy holidays to those of you that are, that are celebrating the different holidays this year. We know it's a new year for uh, the Gregorian calendar. And uh, but uh, it'll be actually the real new year will be coming up just in a few months there. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live and Shalom to you all.